transmission. It could be a sighting issue where you see difficulty sighting transmission to do the great job. Okay. Thanks a lot. And now, please. Asaf Biderman here, um, Associate Director at Sensible City Lab at MIT. We'll talk about the Copenhagen wheel today. This is uh, prototype number two of the wheel. What you see here is uh, plug and play. You can stick it in any bike, no batteries, no wires necessary. Everything is contained here inside the hub. Once a bike is instrumented with this wheel, it captures your energy when you brake. It stores it in a set of batteries that's inside the wheel, then it gives you a push automatically when you need it. When you brake, you see this little springy motion. It tells, this is a torque sensor that's inside the hub here, it tells the motor to go into regeneration mode, which then captures your kinetic energy, converts it into electrical energy and stores it in the batteries. Let's go on. <laughs> then, when you pedal forward, you see the same springiness. It's the same torque sensor. It understands the amount of energy you put in when you bike, and then it tells the motor how much energy to supplement you with accordingly. You set it on your phone, which is what you control this bike with. You can tell it, double my effort, triple my effort. And then, in a sense, as you bike, the bike adds more to your biking power and you feel very light, very powerful. You can climb hills easily, you can travel very far without sweating much. The idea is that some of the cities that we used to see in the past, for example, uh, LA and Beijing, were not really designed for biking, they were built around cars, very big master plans, uh, could suddenly, be, suddenly become relevant for biking. Same goes for San Francisco and Vancouver with, with the hills. Uh, if you could climb those easily, maybe more people would, uh, would, would climb a bike. Let's go over here and look inside. Sure. Because this is absolutely packed with technology and sensors and devices and everything. What's in here? Yeah, so uh, the, the same energy that we use to push you with uh, is also powering a little computer, a GPS, a wireless radio, and several environmental sensors. NOx, carbon monoxide, relative humidity, temperature, there's also noise measurement. So as you ride, you get real-time information about the quality of air you breathe. You can share it with your friends so that you can all benefit from a lot of data about uh, environmental air quality and plan clean routes through the city as you move around. And uh, if you want to go further, you can share it anonymously with the city so that everybody benefits from high resolution uh, environmental air quality measurements on the street level, which is really where it's important to measure the quality of air we breathe. Um, in a sense, every bike, each and every one of those is a mobile weather station. Um, here you see the, the, the batteries. This is still kind of a lab prototype, so you see all the wiring and everything. Uh, in the center is the motor, which is also the generator. Here you see the microprocessor, it's a computer. And the sensors are just tucked behind. And some more batteries. And uh, on the other side is where the, ter the torque sensor lies. Spoking is just a normal spoking. You can put it on any rim, uh, any rim size, and it fits within standard rear dropout, so you can fit it onto almost any bike. That's the idea. Fit it in your bike, control it with your phone. If you don't have a phone, flip the switch and you're ready to go.